Today we're here with Joyce Allen Stewart. The Allens were a pioneer family here in Lafayette. Um, and we were referred to her by Nancy Fled. So your dad, you say, was born here in Lafayette? And his father was as well. His father as well. When was your dad born? I hit the wrong generation. He was born in 1889. 1889. And so his dad came here and was born he was, here no, in Lafayette? He was born here. His dad, your grandfather. My grandfather. Was born in Lafayette also. And mm -hmm. what year was he born? Do we have any I idea? I can't remember. We have it down in the book, but my daughter has the book. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Your dad that was, was Albert Allen. Albert Allen was your grandfather. Yeah. And then how long did you live in Lafayette? Until I was out of high school. You went to Alkalani's? Yeah. And what was it like growing up then? I used to ride my horse all over. <laughs> where, would, where did you live? Um, well, when I, when I was born, my dad was in the Piedmont Fire Department. And my mother died two weeks after I was born from a blood clot. So here he is with a eight-year-old son and a newborn so he moves to lot back to Lafayette to my grandmother and we moved into her house and she helped raise us and we were there until oh gosh end of elementary school and then we moved up to Stowe Lane and we were there when I took off for college and left home. Where did your grandmother live? What part of Lafayette? Um downtown oh okay right there there's a cleaners and a restaurant there now on the corner right next to the lucas property the lucas property mm -hmm. which one's that give me a cross street and i can probably okay, uh moraga road and what's the other one moraga boulevard right oh up? gotcha yeah. okay right okay yeah right next to the old fire department we right were on okay side. so fact, my dad had a wire run from the <laughs> from the fire department over to our house before you had pagers or anything. And when they needed them for a fire, they'd just poke the button and he'd go taken off over to the <laughs> fire department. So after your grandmother's house, I remember back in the 70s, it was a gas station. Yeah. Was that the first business after I, her I house? Think so I wasn't living here at that time. Mm -hmm. What else? So you had your horse. You lived up off on Stowe Lane. Yeah, that was where I had my horse. And did you ride downtown for and participate? Not, in... not really. I was in the Walnut, uh, the Walnut Parade. What do mm -hmm. I call it? Uh, the Walnut Festival. Festival. Rode in that one year with a friend of mine. <laughs> Excellent. But mostly it was just jump on her and go. Mm -hmm. It so, was a good place to grow up. Yeah, I agree. I grew up there too. Um, so um, we what... were the first class out of Stanley. Okay. And that was, so in the eighth grade? Yeah. What year was that? Uh, probably 54 we graduated. 58 I graduated from Alkalani's. So Alkalani's was still relatively new because they finished it in 42? 41. My cousin Ed was the first graduating class. Is he still around? He passed away about 10 years ago. He was the big jock. Oh, wow. He was captain of the football team and the basketball team, and he played tennis and all of that. That's neat. In fact, he was the battalion chief for Lafayette when he retired. Is your father's house on Stowe still standing, do you? Gosh, I don't know. It might be. And did you raise your family in Lafayette as well? No. Most of the time we were in Fresno. Oh, okay. My daughter lives up on Brown Avenue now. She's real active in all the community stuff. Donna Colombo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she's talked with Mary McCrosker. Okay. Like yeah, I don't. I haven't met her yet. Yeah. Let's see. So, um, what were your memories of the house on Stowe, and the memories of your grandmother? So your grandmother, she she, she didn't she, pass away until gosh, when was it? Sixty. I believe and her husband she was like 97 wow and she came well, actually I'm three quarters Canadian because <laughs> my father's family was you know the ones that settled in Lafayette but my mother 
came her brother was an engineer on the Oakland or yeah the Oakland Bay Bridge oh wow and they were from Vancouver and she came down to visit him while he was working on the bridge and he knew my dad and introduced him and they fell in love and she never went back they got married in gosh, Larkspur or somewhere <laughs> so was the grandmother your maternal grandmother she was your mom's mom no she was your mom's, mom's your dad's mom and with her passing away, unfortunately, I didn't really know too many of her family. Mm -hmm. And then so, but your grandfather, let's say he was he, born he, in the 1860s. 60s, I believe, yeah. yeah. Did he ever talk to you or did your I dad? Was, I was like two years old when he died. Oh, I see. Yeah. And the stories that he passed on. My grandma was the one that used to have all the stories. Oh, my God. She could go on for hours. About Lafayette. Can you tell me any she of them? She was eight years old when she came from Canada. She came from um, Prince Edward Island. Oh, yeah. And That's she beautiful. said they came on a train all the way across on a train. And she said it was on her eighth birthday that they left Canada and came down. And they bought property right next to the Allens in Lafayette. She was a Giro. I'm sure you're familiar with the Giro's. I went to high school with one of them. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, he's our cousin. <laughs> Elwin, the doctor. Um, I know his son, Rick. Yeah, we kind of lost track of them, too. But um, she was a Giro. And they settled there. Their property was right next to the Allen property there originally. When you look at the old maps, mm -hmm. and they have the things, Jero was right next to Allen. And that was off the Happy yeah. Valley, the Stowe area, or downtown? It was down, more of downtown. Some, some was off Happy Valley. You lose track after a while. Now my daughter's living on Brown Avenue. Talk about adding insult to injury. Because <laughs> old man Brown bought the thing, the entire land grant, with my great grandmother's money. Oh. He didn't have a nickel. Her husband died on the wagon train coming out. They were on the same wagon train. And he was a widower, and her husband died on the way out. And here she had like two or three little kids. So they married, and then he bought Lafayette with her money. They had, what was it, like 600 head of cattle and $900 in gold or something. Wow. Yeah, she, there's a clock that Nancy Flood would kill the cat, but we can't get away from my cousin. <laughs> there's an antique, um, you know, one of those chiming clocks. Mm -hmm. And they brought the gold out hidden in this clock on the wagon train. So that was what they bought Lafayette with. But in those days, as you well know, things were patriarchal. So when um, everybody passed away in those days, everything went to the male side of the family. So seeing as we were little Allens and not Browns, <laughs> we got very little, even oh. though her money bought the whole thing. I forget, it wasn't 900 acres or something in that land grant from General Moraga. Wow. Yeah. Boy, would I love to have a bag. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so... Uh, Interesting. What other stories did she tell you oh, about Lafayette and being here when she was so young? Oh, my favorite one was when uh, they were living in the house down next to the creek in Lafayette, where the right across the creek from the fire department, and they uh, they knew everybody, you know, within fifty miles. And what was his name? Joaquin Moraga. He was a big bandit. Yes. And his favorite thing to do was. You know, they, he'd come galloping down the road and wave at my grandfather. And he came in to water his horses. He was on his way to his sister's that lived out in Moraga, I guess. And five minutes later, here comes the sheriff looking for him. So he said, Albert, have, have, have you seen Joaquin? Oh, yeah. He went and he sends him off the wrong direction. The wrong direction. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, she thought that was just the funniest thing. <laughs> said he was always doing stuff like that. He was a road contractor, and he originally built most of the roads in Lafayette and that part of Contra Costa County. That was back when they used to do it with horses. 
and they'd have like sleds, you know, they'd used to flatten it out. Mm -hmm. So that was a long time ago. We've been here forever. And your daughter's still here? Yeah, she's up top of Brown Avenue. <laughs> and her kids. She has kids too? Yeah, they all went to Aklani. So that would make them sixth generation? Uh, gosh, let's see. Yeah. Your grandfather, your father. My grandfather, you, father, me. Her, and then fifth, maybe fifth. Yeah. Either fifth or sixth. Do you remember, um, so when you, or when your parents, or your mom, sorry, not your mom, your dad, um, the rodeo must have still been going on at the Hamlin Ranch then. Did he ever talk about that? Well, that was my uncle. Oh. Warren Allen. He was the one that was, he was a professional horseshoer. And he used to horseshoe, he used to even horseshoe at some of the tracks. Yeah, he lived down on off Old Tunnel Road. And he passed away, gosh, maybe 30 years ago. And he was the one that was really into horses. We always had horses. And my dad had had one. You know, I think he said he stuck me on a horse when I was six months old. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've been on one now in 50 years, but don't mm. have no desire to. <laughs> Do you mind if I ask how old you are? 77. Oh, okay. You're still young. Yeah, I was born in 40. Yeah, my brother was born in 32. He passed away in... Oh, what was it? 99. He had diabetes and he had every complication that can befall you. But he lived here his whole life. He had a place down on Wigget Lane, just right off Ignatio. Oh, okay. Wigget. Yeah, that was where he was living when he passed. Yeah, he married, but he, he had stepchildren, but he didn't have any of his own. His first wife died of liver cancer. And they'd only been married like three years. And then his, <laughs> this is confusing. His second wife is my son-in-law's mother. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's interesting. They both worked for the county health department. And she was an RN. And he was working for the county health department as well. Mm -hmm. And they were both widowed at the time. And they ended up getting married. And the first time Donna saw Randy was at their wedding. And she said, who is he? <laughs> and it was, you know, Lucille's oldest son. And like 10 years later, they ended up getting married. We used to only see each other maybe a couple times a year. So everyone's connected. Yeah. <laughs> so it was funny when Donna Randy got married, she's the one at the top of Brown. The priest said, um, are these two people related? They said, well, not really. Just by marriage. <laughs> So they told Dave he was going to have to sit in the middle of the aisle. He couldn't sit with either the, the father, you know, the bride's side or the groom's side because he was connected to both. Okay, so your grandmother is Adelaide? Adelaide. And, and then her maiden name was Giroux? Giroux. And then... Adelaide Victoria Giroux. But then she also married... No, she's she was only married once. Oh, okay. So who was married to Mr. Brown? Um... The ugly one. <laughs> God, was she, woman was was she ugly. a great aunt or? No, hmm. that was the grandmother. Whose grandmother? Not I'm your grandmother. About seven generations. Right. Back. Maybe yeah. I should draw a tree. Maybe that might be helpful. Yeah, it's too bad. Donna has all the stuff, but she couldn't come over. Oh, bummer. She's, we have books and things. Um, I mean, Brain fade is to, she's the one that married Elam Brown. Right. That wasn't your grandmother. No, no, no. This was way back in 46. 1846. 1846, she married Elam Brown on the train coming out. And then she was an Allen. And so 
Oh, I see. That's where we got the division between oh, the Brown I and the Allen. Oh, I see. Allen. Gotcha. Yeah. So, but so she was related to your grandfather. She was my. What you're talking about? What the heck's her name? Was she your great aunt, possibly? No. She wasn't she your was grandfather's great, sister. Great, great grandmother. Oh, long before that, then. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I'll have to reach out to Donna. Yeah, well. she's got the, the dates and everything. She has the book. We had a relative that went, oh gosh, in the late 50s when he retired. He got into genealogy and research clear back to the Revolutionary War. So that was as far as we could get. We couldn't get past there back into where they came from, from England. Well, now they have tests that show you that, the DNA tests. Yeah, but... Who knows how accurate that is. That's true. <laughs> um, so when you were growing up in Lafayette, or even stories that your grandmother may have shared, or your dad, what what was downtown like? Did you ever work in town, or no. you just you didn't you just finished school and moved away? One thing I remember, um, one of the best community things we ever did was every Halloween, the look like sixth grade and under. They would assign, each class was assigned a store, and he had those like poster paints, the washable ones, mm -hmm. and you'd make up a design, and each class would go downtown, they give you a whole day to do it, <laughs> and you would paint your store with your design, your Halloween picture thing, and they did that for years. That's neat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Gibson Hardware usually for so I think we'd get that because one of my friends was in my grade and her dad owned it. Where was it located? Um, gosh, what's in there now? Just west of Starbucks. It was right there on Main Street. So kind of across from Safeway. That that. Oh, I see. Yeah. So like what where there, now? there used to be the Killarney House and now there's some other little shops. You mean like there? Right on Main Street. Okay. Yeah. West west of Starbucks would be like no, the roundup. east of Starbucks. Betw okay. Yeah. So between Moraga and Lafayette Circle. Yeah. Moraga Boulevard. Right. Or Road. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The Gibsons, they used to live on Monroe. She was one of my best friends. In fact, I think Nancy is very good friends with her sister. Okay. What the hell was her name? Sandra. Sandra Gibson. I think she still lives in Alameda. I'm not sure. I haven't seen her in 100 years. What other community events can you think of that, that your family would be involved in? Or I know that you and Nancy's family were friends. Oh, yeah. And you guys went camping together. We'd been camping, yeah. It was, I still remember doing that. <laughs> yeah, we had a, um, every summer, we would go up to, we bought a cabin up at Dutch Flat, which, you know, was up there by Baxter. Mm -hmm. And we'd go up there every summer. And I remember Judy Gibson's grandparents had a um, house on Russian River at Monterio. And so if... We weren't going with her to Russian River. We'd go with my family up to Ditch Flat. So every summer we'd do stuff together. And we used to ride horses together, too. Where would you ride? Just around town? Used to occasionally. Well, we had, um, actually, we had a key to this place. Because my great uncle knew um, Dollar. Oh, okay. And we'd come in and ride through here when it was nothing. How pretty. And then we'd go over... Release Station Road, otherwise known as Snake Hill. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we would go over Snake Hill, and we had keys to some other property out there in Burton Valley, and we'd ride out there and, you know, just take our lunch and spend the whole day. Occasionally, we'd ride out past St. Past Mary's. It was too far to go on the horse out to Canyon, but we'd ride our bikes out there. Mm -hmm. Did you or any of your family ride on the train? My brother did. We still have an original prospectus on selling shares with that thing. How cute. That it was put in. Neat. Yeah, because <laughs> um, yeah, my brother was eight when my mother died, and they were living in Piedmont. So they would get on the train in Oakland, 
and they would come out and they would get off at um, Saranac was the station there mm-hmm. where release goes up. Right. And they'd walk over because my uncle, her brother, lived right there on release station, you know, where the creek runs through release station room. Mm-hmm. Um, when you're looking this way at Release Station Road going up, he was... On the right-hand side? Yeah, he was on the west, the east side. The creek was here. He was the house right there on the east side. Because there used to be, from what I remember, I heard years ago, if you're going up, if you're just making a left, up Snake, and then you can make a right onto Beechwood, Mm -hmm. right around there was a house that's I mean that's Olympic that's where the train tracks were there was a house there that actually had um, that would um, sell milk or distribute milk oh, a dairy McNeil's dairy yeah McNeil's okay yeah did but that's not the house you're talking about on the east side no no he wasn't on the Olympic part okay he was down yeah on the east side of the creek the north side of the creek. Yeah. <laughs> he was right there. The creek goes through like this. And release station goes here. Mm-hmm. Olympics back here. Right. And then Snake Hill goes up that way. He was right there. Oh, I see. Right next to the creek. Gotcha. So they have like a, a staging area there now for people to like no. disembark. No, oh. right now they do. For no, people, it's a parking lot. Right, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. A, state, a trailhead for people that want to get on the bike path. Well, he was the other side of the creek. Okay. Oh, I see. On this side then. Yeah. Okay. I, I think the house is still there. I haven't driven by it in years. Yeah, he passed away when I was like seven, I believe. Mm-hmm. He was really a sweet man. Yeah, you wonder what it was like working on that bridge. <laughs> Scary. Yeah, he was an engineer. He'd worked on them in Canada and then came down here and worked on the Oakland Bridge. My grandfather worked on it too. Oh, really? Yeah, back in 36, 37. Yeah. Crazy. They probably knew each other. I know, I was just thinking that. <laughs> That's crazy. And yeah. what if, what if, you know... What if, um, what if your grandmother had been introduced to, to him instead? Instead, exactly. <laughs> well, he already had two kids on the way. Uh, um, what about other friends that lived downtown? The houses there weren't that many. There were actually quite a few. We lived right next door to the Lucases. So are you familiar with them at all? Okay. They're the paving company, right? Yeah, that's one of their enterprises. The father the the patriarch was Manuel okay and then his two sons was Clifford and Marvin okay and I think Clifford is living out in Clayton now and Marvin passed away about five six years ago they were really nice yeah I can remember them <laughs> and then gosh who else lived around there well, the uh, directly across the street was the Methodist Church, mm-hmm. and what grandmother told me was that uh, Albert, her husband, donated that property to the church when they built on it there. Wow, that was part of our chunk to begin with too. So there's a lot of history there. There's an old house on Moraga Boulevard near the end by Carol Lane. Mm -hmm. It's a barn looking thing. Isn't that gone? No. It's it's still there. Red with white trim. Big barn. It's on it's on the creek. You just go across the bridge if you're going towards Carol Lane on Moraga Boulevard. Yeah. And it's on the left hand side. Oh on Moraga Boulevard. Yeah. Oh okay. No, I was thinking the end the one where you say the witch lived. Where was that? That was on Moraga Road, like you're going to Moraga, mm-hmm. just past the elementary school. I can't remember what her name, I can't remember what her name was now. But Once you passed Lafayette? 
Lafayette Elementary? On your way out of Lafayette, yeah. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Before you come to, um, is it St. Mary's Road that goes through? Anyhow, it's not there anymore. Okay. There, there was a big orchard there and it had this old broken down house. And they used to say it was haunted. How it's fun. the only way they keep us out of it. Well, that's why I mentioned the house on Carroll Lane. Or on Moraga Boulevard, because yeah. it, there's stories of it being haunted, too. Oh, yeah, they all were. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Any friends over in the Spring Hill region, over by uh, the high school, or? Not really, because they went to a different elementary, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you went to? We all went to Aglani's together. Mm -hmm. We were the last graduating class to have Lafayette, Arinda, and Moraga. After that, there was it Miramani went in first? Right. That was, so we were the last one to have all three La Marinda in it. We, I think we had 450 or something. It was a big class for that. Does the name Niles Searles oh, yeah. ring any bells? He was in my class. Okay. He's my father-in-law. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Tell him I said hi. He I probably sure will. Won't remember me? Oh, he might. He probably will, because he remembers a lot of the old Aquilani oh, yeah. stuff. Because he, it, that's what just piqued my memory. Because he said that he was the last class before mm -hmm. they built Mount yeah, Mirror Mine. Yeah, he was in my class. Crazy. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, tell him I said hi. I will. Any other stories you'd like to share? Um, oh gosh. That your grandmother may have told you, or your dad. The Joaquin Moraga one's great. Oh, yeah. She just loved to tell that story. She was quite the character. She was five foot nothing. I think she was like 4'11". <laughs> and none of us were real short. I Now I'm 5'6". I used to be 5'7". My brother is six feet. And cousin Ed, was. she raised Ed, too, because his parents were killed. So he was 6'2". And she'd sit the... <laughs> Shaking your, 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 nobody talked back to grandma. <laughs> so she was really quite the sturdy pioneer lady because she was the big matriarch. I think she was the reason my dad never remarried. She would have put a hex on him. <laughs> but she, uh, nobody took any gift. She was really something. Was she involved with any of the churches or the community stuff that went on in town? Um, I think she was mostly too busy raising the family. Yeah. We had like three generations for a while there living in the old house in Lafayette. We Wait. had a couple of, uh, one of her brothers, gosh, Will, he was there. He was an old cowboy. <laughs> and for a while he worked up at um, the Maillards, you know, like, the people in San Francisco, mm -hmm. they had a huge sheep ranch somewhere up Northern California. And when he got older, he, he worked for them for a while at their sheep ranch, kind of ramrodding the thing. Mm -hmm. And he lived with us here for a while. And another uncle <laughs> that was married to somebody and she died, so he moved in with us too. And my grandfather was there, my father, my brother. She was too busy. Just, and you did everything by hand then. I mean, she was still making her own butter up until the 50s. We had a cow that we kept up on Stowe Lane, and she'd make butter. And we had, you know, fruit trees and everything. She grew her own vegetables. She'd can her fruit. You know, it was like people used to live. It was like a glance into the past. A lot different. And she passed in 64. I think it was 64. And then how, who? all three of my kids were born. Oh, I see. Um, and, and Debbie was about that big. <laughs> that's your youngest? Yeah. Is, um, was the house there for a while? Um, until we sold the corner there and moved to Stowe Lane. And we had Grandma in the one house there on Stowe Lane, and we were up above at my great uncle's. Mm -hmm. That was where we kept my horse and all. 
What was the address on Stowe? Uh, 949, I think. And Betty and Ed were living there, too. He was really more like a brother than a cousin. Because Grandma raised him from the time he was, like, 12. So, phew, here we all are together. <laughs> That's nice, though. Uh, Crowded, but lots of love. Oh, yeah. So, after after she moved in with you onto Stowe, what, did someone live in her house, or...? I'm just trying to figure out maybe when the house no, we was... had her in a separate house down, right. down on Stowe, and we were at the top. But the house that she had on Moraga... Oh, that's when we sold it. And then what happened after that, do you know? Well, they bulldozed it and put it in a gas station. Oh, so it was right after that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Have you been to Lafayette lately? About two days ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> Have you been to the West End of town? Did you see where the Cape Cod house used to be? I couldn't believe it when even the Mexican restaurant went out of business. I can remember the Cape Cod house. Do you remember the restaurant before that? I think that was the Tunnel Inn? I think so. I remember it being called that. Mm -hmm. And I remember when the um, El Charo opened up there in Lafayette. Wow. My grandmother loved that place. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> One of the funniest things we ever did with Grandma, that we were up at Tahoe for a week, and we hopped over to Carson City, or Virginia City, and they had the old antique saloons and everything. And we went in there, took her in there, and let her play the dime slot machines. <laughs> How fun. Oh, God, she was like, 85 at the time. <laughs> had the time of her life. What a hoot. Oh. And she was so strict, you know, no no drinking, no smoking, no gambling. Okay, here we go. Yeah, she, what was it they used to call it? There was a thing in the town called the Good Templars Lodge. It was a bunch of Bible thumpers. She belonged to that thing. That was in Lafayette? Yeah. And that was very no drinking. Where was the building that they met in? I don't know. But I remember her always talking about that. And we used to have, um, I belonged to Job's Daughters. And we had the, um, where the old veterans building used to be, that down in the basements where they used to have the Masonic meetings. Gotcha. So that's where we used to have our Job's daughter stuff. I cried when they tore that building down. Oh, good, I thought I was the only one. Nope, I stood outside <laughs> crying. But the new one's beautiful. It is. It's really pretty. I haven't been in it yet. No reason to. But Both pretty. the library is beautiful and the new Veterans Hall down at the West End is beautiful too. Oh, the library I've been into, that's what I was thinking of, where they moved the Veterans Hall. Yeah. That is very pretty. Yeah. Down there by Risa. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, these things, they kind of come in spurts and, you know, you try to think of them. I should have thought ahead. Do you have any photos here that we could look at? Uh, I, no telling where they are. Okay. Everything's boxed up. <laughs> I could probably, you know, find some and get together with them. I, I could come back? Yeah. And we can go over some? Yeah, I'll have to like. look for them. And if Donna could be here next time, she has the books. Are those photo albums? No, the the family history. Oh, with I see. All the dates and everything in it. Oh, gotcha. All the genealogy. Okay, that sounds good. Great. Did yeah. you want to add anything else? Uh, nothing readily comes to mind. Okay. Well, we will continue this another time then. Yeah. Thank you so much.